his trusted servants here around the throne. So look at, the, look at this, this vision of the Lord sitting on a throne. Isaiah is in the temple. He's worshiping and he's ushered into the presence of God. And he sees this throne room. The temple become a throne room. And it says the train of his garment filled the temple. In Hebrew, it's, it's, it really gives that sense of just, just the hem of his garment. Just the edge of it filled the temple. Can you picture that? Stop. Picture. Use these visions to ignite your imagination. Can you imagine a structure massively greater than this one? Massively greater. And just the hem of his robe filled it. It reminds me even of the future of a lady touching the hem of Jesus' robe and being completely healed. Just the hem the magnificence of the hem of his garment and the angels singing this. Now look at the details we get with the seraphim here. Seraphim means burning ones. Burning ones. These six wings, notice, two cover the face like they can't even look on the holiness out of reverence. Two, cover the feet. Again, in a posture of reverence, of being bowed down, of covering the feet. The feet are also, especially in the ancient Near East, known as a dirty aspect, right? An unholy aspect kind of thing. And they're covering their feet. So two of their sets of wings give this posture of reverence, of humility, of worshiping, yes, but in humility. And then two are used for the flying. Two, used, ready for the word of God to go on their set. The very posture of these servants show us that for a servant of the Lord, it's far more about waiting on the Lord than it is about acting. To wait on the Lord is probably going to fill more of our time than actually going with that specific word to go. The nature of a servant is to see those who need a touch from God, the grace of God, the word of God, and say, God, here I am. The very nature of this servant. All eyes on Jesus as humans, as finite beings, as the way we're designed, says both eyes on Jesus. Both eyes on Jesus. Look at the example of Peter on the water. To be distracted, to have both eyes is to be completely focused on him. My eyes have seen the king, and that's where I'm remaining in focus. We live spiritual lives, supernatural lives. Now, today, kingdom living. Why did Isaiah have such a good revelation of the suffering servant? Because he saw him on the throne. He was told that Israel had to go through a refining fire, but there was hope. In the latter chapters of Isaiah, there's hope. God redefines his people's purpose based on grace. He showed the way ahead of us. It's not about condemnation or activism, but grace, sacrifice. And Jesus showed this to us. He lived it. There's a moment in history where my Lord died for us to be a family. I love family. Can you tell? I love this church, the family that we have been for generations. I am in faith for us. But we need to see the King, the glory, the holiness, and the one who is willing to walk in the dirt at the same time. 